Hey Summoners, how's it going? My name is Nathan Ng and like always, I'm here with the upcoming changes for next patch. Following an exciting preview, we have the details on what's exactly to come. But before we get started, I just want to say real quick that my voice is going through a lot so please bear with me through this video. Anyway, whether you're preparing new picks for the next patch or just sick of this one, we'll inform you of what's to come. While this isn't guaranteed to be the final product, the majority of these changes will make it through. Make sure you hit that sub button and let's hop right into those changes on patch 11.14. First up, we have some brand new skins. Quite a few, actually, starting with the Ruined Pantheon. The Prestige skin Ascended Pantheon will also be unlockable. Following it, we also have Sentinel Diana, Aurelia, Olaf, Riven, and Vayne joining the shop as well. These skins give a dark but stylish twist to the mentioned champions, and I heavily suggest you check them out. They're a little bit different from what we're used to seeing, and they might fit your aesthetic better than others. Moving forward, we'll be talking about the balance changes. We'll start balance changes off with the systems as they're universal. In case you missed our patch preview, the single item receiving a buff next patch is Dead Man's Plate. It received a huge adjustment this patch, losing some bonus movement speed on his passive and receiving some damage in compensation. Of course, its situational damage as a damage type was swapped out, but with the lower charge time, it should technically do more than before. However, Dead Man's Plate has always been a cost inefficient purchase, placing a lot of its worth in its mobility that it provided. Now that its biggest strength is less effective than before, it can finally receive some stat buffs to compensate. The armor is going up from 40 to 45 next patch. This change isn't that big, but it should make the item feel better to purchase, especially since it doesn't feel as impactful as previous patches. That being said, let's talk about the champion changes next. Like always, we'll run it from top to bottom. Our first top lane change is for Nocturne. Yes, a top lane change and technically a mid lane change as well. Nocturne has popped off on patch 11.13 and he's dominating three roles, and we can't have that. Riot is acting faster after previous cases. They don't want another case of Viego or Lee Sin. In their defense, Nocturne currently holds a disgustingly high win rate around 53 to 54%. There's definitely a call to action here, and his passive will only be 50% effective against minions beginning next patch. If you haven't played against Nocturne in a solo lane, then you're probably not aware of how ridiculous his passive can get. Especially when you'd expect to win a fight with all 6 of your minion buddies helping you out, it can get rather frustrating when Nocturne hits a massive heal once he hits you as well as your whole minion wave with his passive. Tribreaker has helped Nocturne find a ton of success this patch and he's receiving an adjustment after some newfound power. Also, if you're like me and you struggle with getting one shot by assassins over and over again this season, check out ProGuides.com. Whether it's Nocturne or any other assassin, we have coaches who can teach you how to play against them. Now back to the changes. Stripebreaker's changes had some detrimental effects for Juggernauts however. That's why Darius is getting a buff next patch as he's sitting around a 47% win rate on this one. Honestly, I could care less. I want him to die with this meta. The 2% overall drop was caused by the loss of mobility. Darius previously had more of a backline access than before with the introduction of Stridebreaker this season. He also received some nerfs to cut back his power, but since mobility is no longer the issue, he's having the power gifted back to him. His passive's AD bonus is going up from 20 to 205 to 30 to 230, and his ease cooldown is going back from 26 to 18 to 24 to 14. These are basically reverts on previous nerfs that he received over the course of Season 11. It's a good change since he, as he I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but he does need buffs, but I don't, I don't want to see them. He just needs them, you know? Garen also took a hit, but not nearly as hard as Darius. Thus, his buff is much smaller and his Q's movement speed is going up from 30% to 35-45% to based on ability level. More mobility is always great and there's no doubt his winner will climb next patch with it. Next up is Alawi, and this time she got a real buff. A real one, I promise, it's not just two mana. Her movement speed is going up next patch by 10. There have been previous 5 movement speed buffs and nerfs in the past that have made or broken champions and I'm sure Riot is taking a giant step and giving her double that. This will put Alawi in top tier of movement speed, only with Mininar at level 18, Elise in spider form, Master Yi, and Cassiopeia after level 6 can beat her. It's crazy to me how they just nerfed a ton of movement speed and just buffed a ton more on other champions, but hey, you know, nerfing universal movement speed could be the move. Anyway, this will especially come into play during the laning phase as without a boots advantage, Alawi will either outrun or keep up with you. I'm certain the dynamic of the laning phase will change as this also means that she can be more effectively running away if things go south. Being unable to chase for that last auto attack can spell the end of you because she can also run away until her cooldowns are back up and then just turn the fight around. I hate it when Alawi lives with 1 HP, it's so frustrating. Speaking of which, here's our question of the day. What champion is the most frustrating for you to play against? I personally hate Yumi. I mean, I don't know what else I could say about her. I don't care if her win rate is great or if it's trash. I just don't want to see her. Or Pike. Or LeBlanc. Or yeah, I mean, those are my top three for sure. Anyway, let us know your answers in the comments down below. 
While we expect big changes for Irelia, we're still waiting on the complete details. We'll make sure to keep you guys informed and at the latest, we'll update right before the next patch goes live. Again, make sure to subscribe so you can receive notifications. Next, let's run through the jungle. Dr. Muno is up for some huge changes next patch. He's been significantly underperforming as a jungler in spite of an amazing top lane performance after his rework. First, his level 1 attack speed is going up from 0.67 to 0.72, but his ratio remains at 0.67. This just helps him out a little bit at level 1, which helps him out both as a jungler and a laner. Next, his passive health regen is going down from 2% to 1 to 2% based on level, and the passive cooldown is going up from 45 to 15 seconds to 60 to 15 seconds. This is a bigger nerf to the top lane Mundo, who relies more heavily on his passive to stay safe. Next are some direct jungle buffs. Muno's Q damage cap against monsters is going up from 300 to 500 to 350 to 500. The ability will also fully refund health after striking a jungle monster. Finally, his E will deal 200% damage instead of 140% to monsters and will punt away small monsters immediately. Muno players should notice a huge increase in their clear speeds as well as healthier ones starting next patch. Unfortunately, this is definitely an overall nerf for top lane Mundo, but I'm pretty sure that he'll still do pretty well in most ranks. Some other big changes are for Lilia. If you caught our patch preview, you should already be familiar with them. Regardless, we'll take some time to repeat them. First, her armor is going up by 2, while her health regeneration per 5 is going down from 9 to 7.5. Her passive will now have a new effect as well. Lilia will heal for 18 to 120, plus 1.5% AP health over duration against large monsters. Against champions, the healing is higher at 19 to 189, plus 6% AP. Lilia will only heal off of one monster at a time. This healing is also 33% effective against sources beyond the first. Also, the damage is going up from 5% of max health to 6% plus 1.5% for every 100 AP that Lilia has. Next, her Q's mana cost is going up by 20. The maximum number of stacks going down from 5 to 4, and the movement speed per stack changed from 7 to 11% plus 1 for every 100 AP to 3 to 7 plus 3% for every 100 AP. The duration of the speed bonus is also being reduced from 5.5 to 5 seconds, and the stack follow-up time increased from 1 to 1.5 seconds. Finally, the cooldown is going up from 4 flat to 6 to 4 based on the ability rank, and the damage is also being increased from 30 to 90 to 35 to 95. Her W's damage is going up from 70 to 130 plus 30% AP to 70 to 150 plus 35% AP. Oh, okay, well, there's more. Next, her E's cooldown is going up from 12 to 18, while the slow is going up from 25 to 45% to 40% flat. The damage is also going up from 70 to 150 to 70 to 170. Her ultimate's AP ratio is going up from 30% to 40%, and the sleep duration is going down from 2 to 3 seconds to 1.5 to 2.5 seconds. The drowsy slow going up from 25 to 10%, and the slow increase is removed. Overall, what does this mean for Lilia? I have no freaking idea. Hopefully you guys can make it out for me. <laughs> just kidding. Our job here is to let you guys know. This generally just makes Lilia easier to use for the average player. She has more damage and sustain, but this comes at the cost of her incredible crowd control and some early game mobility. I definitely expect her to be weaker in competitive play as a result. Now, on to some simpler changes, beginning with Shaco. He's been a top tier solo queue stomping machine, and Riot is finally nerfing him again. This time, it's not an exclusive AP Shaco nerf, it's a direct nerf to all Shaco players. They're removing him from the game, is what I bet a lot of you guys would wish you could say. But I'm just clowning around, you know, doing Shaco things. Instead, they're lowering his HP from 587 to 560, and also decreasing his movement speed from 350 to 345. I'm sure players will live through the HP nerf, but the movement speed nerf is actually pretty big. Especially since Shaco relies on picking up early kills, having a harder time chasing down enemies can make all the difference. This change rewards players with good awareness as their odds of surviving a Shaco gank are actually a bit higher, especially if they're willing to blow flash early on in the gank. Next is a nerf for another top tier jungler that's been dominating solo queue. Shen Zhao's W cooldown is going up from 12 to 6 seconds to 12 to 8 seconds. This mid to late game nerf should keep his power in check as he's been absolutely killing it in solo queue. He's recently taken this spot as the second most popular jungler in the game, not even that far behind Lee Sin. Graves is up for another small buff. Once again, he's getting some extra damage as his AD is going up from 66 to 68. Marksmen love these flat AD buffs, and I expect Graves to become an S tier jungler in high elo very, very soon. Ivern is another jungler who's getting buff. Holy crap, please no, this champion is so creepy. He's 90% legs, and the way he just waltz around is just. <laughs> 
I don't want to see him. Anyway, his E shield has gone up from 80 to 200 to 80 to 220. It's a straightforward buff and with some recent buffs to support items, Ivern will likely see more play in the coming patches as well. Finally, we have a buff for Rek'Sai. She suffered heavily this patch because her precious Prowler's Claw was nerfed. Her unburrowed Q damage per hit is going up from 20 to 40 to 21 to 45, while her burrowed Q damage is going up from 60 to 180 to 60 to 200. It's a solid buff, especially at level 9 when she has the ability max. That wraps up the jungle, so let's head over to the mid lane next. Nikali has been a little bit too popular. She's recently popped off in high elo and comfortably found herself as the third most popular mid laner with over a 20% ban rate. Starting next patch, her Q will no longer be castable during her E and her ultimate's damage is being reduced. The minimum damage is going down from 75 to 200 to 60 to 200 and the max damage from 225 to 645 to 180 to 600. These are some huge nerfs and she's definitely going to lose some important damage as well as receiving a quality of life nerf. Malzahar popped off this patch after price reductions to mage items paved his way to success. His health is going down from 537 to 510, and his Q's AP ratio is going down from 0.65 to 0.55, as if playing him wasn't punishment enough. This champion is so boring. I mean, you almost deserve the win. Another champion that's been doing really well is Ziggs. Poor guy finally had a chance to shine, and they're already nerfing him. I mean, it's not a huge nerf, but it's definitely going to hurt early on. Zig's mana is going down from 480 to 420. <laughs> nice. By the time you finish your first item, this nerf will basically become irrelevant, but it definitely gets in Zig's way early on into the game. Maybe this is the wrong section to put her, but Seraphine is technically a mid laner, right? Her Q's damage is going up from 55 to 115, plus 40 to 60% AP, to 60 to 120, plus 45 to 65% AP. Her mid lane popularity has dropped significantly, but everybody loves damage, and things might change very soon. We have no reported bottling changes, so we'll go ahead and conclude with supports. Thank goodness my throat is killing me. First up is Karma. Her base AD is going down from 54 to 51. She's being played a ton in high elo especially, and I'm not just talking about TFT. Very surprising since she was considered garbage for the majority of the season. Various buffs to compensate have left her in a decent spot, and if you find some time watching streams, I'm sure you've got to see what she can do. Although Karma still sports a pretty low win rate, players value her for a good reason. She's a reliable laner and scales very well when she picks up some early leads. With less AD, she'll be a weaker flex pick and also rely more on landing cues for poke rather than slowly chipping away with basic attacks. We have a buff coming up for Tarek Nick's patch. His Q's mana cost is going down from 70 to 90 to 65 to 85, and his E's mana cost is going down from 60 to 40. Mana cost reductions are definitely nice since you don't really get to build that much mana on him. With some more spammable abilities, players will definitely have less concerns during the early game as well as during long team fights. Finally, we have some changes for Tom Kench. His passive damage is getting buffed from 2.5% max HP to 12 to 60 plus 2.5% bonus HP. I've already done the math for you, and yes, it is without a buff. Also, his Q will apply damage from an acquired taste, yet another buff. The next change to his Q is the healing, as it is being adjusted from 6 to 10% of his missing HP to 15 to 35 plus 4 to 6% of his missing HP. In this case, it's an early game buff, but a nerf in the late game. Next, his W is receiving a bug fix. The cooldown refund will properly scale with ability haste and refund on mana and cooldown is also going up from 30 to 40% if he hits at least one enemy champion. Finally, his ultimate is receiving a buff. The shield value is going up from 300 to 600 to 400 to 600. And his self slow when eating an ally is going down from 40 to 10% to 30 to 10%. Almost all of these changes were buffs to Tom Kench, and he should hopefully have his time to shine in the near future. That'll be wrapping up our changes for patch 11.14. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. One last thing I'll say before we conclude is that you should check out the description and join our Discord using the link. Also, be free to tag me there as I love to talk to you guys and hang out. Also, maybe even get some games in. Be a part of our community, and you can also be the first to find out about any news, including giveaways that we hold. Anyway, that'll be it for the video. I hope you guys the best of luck in your games. And as always, my name has been Nathan Ng. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.